All right, mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of IMO. Today is the big one. We're handing out the Player of the Season awards for the 2016-17 season. We've got your awards to hand out based on your votes on Twitter. We've got my awards to hand out based on my personal opinion. Loads of different categories to talk about. I think there's going to be some controversial comments on this one. Probably going to upset some people, but that's what the awards are for, baby. Let's do it. Before we crack on with this video, guys, don't forget you can win £250,000. That's a quarter of a million. And all you've got to do is try and guess six football scores correct with Super Six. Okay, I'm going to predict my scores at the end of this video. You can join my league. You can download the app completely free. All the links you need are in the description. We'll talk more at the end. For now, let's crack on with the player awards for this season. Where better place to start than with the goalkeeper? Okay, the man in between the sticks. I gave you guys four options to vote on on Twitter. Maybe you felt some people have been left out, but you only get four options on Twitter. So we went with David De Gea, Hugo Lloris, Tom Heaton, and Thibaut Courtois. All have had quality seasons for different reasons. You guys went with David De Gea as your goalkeeper of the season. 36% of you went with him. Next was actually Tom Heaton. So Tottenham have had the best defense mathematically in the league with Lloris. He didn't get the vote, interestingly, nor did Courtois, who's probably going to win the league. I think, though, to be fair, I've got to agree with you guys on this one. Not only did De Gea get the nod in the PFA team of the season, um, I think he's done the best work in goal because he's probably, if you compare him to Lloris and Courtois at least, got nowhere near as good a defence in front of him. He's doing a lot of the work himself. As things stand, as I record this video, both Lloris and uh, De Gea have got the same amount of clean sheets at 14 this season. Courtois did a little bit worse. He got 13, right? But if you look at the stats for clean sheets this season, you'll see a little pattern. There's a load of Chelsea players along with Courtois who've got 13 clean sheets. There's a load of Tottenham players along with Lloris who've got 14. But no other Man United player has 14 clean sheets like David De Gea because one, their defence has changed a lot than the other two teams, but De Gea has been the constant. He is very consistent, probably the best player at Man United in my opinion. Maybe Zlatan has had a shout for that this season as well. Um, I think De Gea is their main guy. I think if they lose him, which they could do this summer, they're going to miss him big time, but it's a big move for De Gea probably to Real Madrid at some point in his career. I'm sure. I think he's done the best work. Heaton obviously got a lot of credit for playing for Burnley, you know, a team of nowhere near the good um, the good options that Man United and Chelsea and Tottenham have. Uh, he has had Michael Keane in front of him. He's had a really good season as well at Burnley and he deserves his credit. Good keeper. But for me, David De Gea is the right choice. Okay, so we'll continue to go through your guys' votes and my opinions based on positions. But at the end of the video, we will build our team of the season, okay? But next up is right back or right wing back. Your choices were Bellerin, Moses, Valencia, or Kyle Walker. 35% of you went with Spurs' Kyle Walker, same as the PFA. And uh, next up, I believe, was Antonio Valencia, who's not traditionally been a right back, but has definitely given his career kind of a rebirth in the new position at Manchester United, done really well. You could also say the same thing about Victor Moses, to be fair. Definitely not been a, a right back, or he's been more of a wing back, to be fair, this season in the Chelsea kind of five at the back, three at the back, whatever you want to call it. Um, but he's really come out of nowhere. He's not been good in re uh, previous years. He wasn't great for us at West Ham on loan last year, playing in more of a wing role. He's been a little bit of a, you know, a journeyman going on loan to loads of different teams. But at his parent club, Chelsea, he's had a fantastic season. For that reason alone, I'd say he is a shout, to be honest. He is a shout. Kyle Walker's had a couple of really good years in a Spurs shirt now. And he deserves, he deserves some credit for that, for sure. It's between these two, for me... I'm tempted to go Moses because he's had such a breakout season. But I do think, if you're talking about a right back particularly, Carl Walker is more secure. I do think I want to play four at the back in this formation. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Carl Walker like you guys. In fairness, your decisions were pretty on point on, on these polls, to be honest. A lot of you voted around 30, 40,000 of you on each poll. So usually when you get that many people, they tend to make good decisions. Let's see if that's true for the left back slash left wing back spot. Now, I only gave three options for this one. Maybe I left some people out. Some people wanted James Milner considered in there. He scored a lot of penalties. And again, like Victor Moses, playing perhaps out of position, even more so than Victor Moses, to be fair. But I didn't put Milner in there. I didn't personally feel he stood out. It as much because Liverpool's defence hasn't been great this year and it's hard to give it to a defender but maybe he missed out. Anyway, I went with three options. I went with um, Marcus Alonso, new signing at Chelsea of course. I went with Patrick Van Arnholt who's had actually good spells at both Sunderland and Crystal Palace this season and I went with Danny Rose of Spurs. And there was one clear winner here by quite a big margin. It was Marcus Alonso of Chelsea. 68% of you went for him. It was definitely between 
him and Danny Rose. And I think part of the reason you guys went with him is he had a breakout season as well, much like Moses. You know, people not expecting much of him. He didn't have amazing spells at uh, Bolton and Sunderland in the Premier League before. And he's obviously come from Italy this time and, and Conte's seen something in him. He's liked him and he was right, hasn't he? He's been fantastic. Um, do I like him or Danny Rose? Uh, I mean, a lot of you have got... Danny Rose has been injured. He has had an injury spell. He's missed a few games. Ben Davies has come in and done well in that Spurs team. I think because of the fact I didn't go with Moses as well, I think Chelsea's defence deserves some nod. Um, I, I think I'm going to have to go Marcus Alonso. Guys, you're smashing it. This is where it gets interesting, though, as we move into centre-back. There's a load of people we could have included in here. Some guys didn't even get a chance to be voted on. Jan Vertonghen, uh, Ben Gibson have really good years. Neither of these were options for the votes. We went with, as our four candidates, Azpilicueta, David Luiz, Michael Keane, and Toby Alderweireld. Okay, they were the four options. Now, we also didn't include uh, Gary Cahill, another one that could have gone in there. He was in the PFA Team of the Year, but I didn't even give him as an option. I felt that Azpilicueta and David Luiz have stood out more for me, and you can't have three Chelsea centre-backs in there. Now, who do I think it was the best centre-back in this collection. It's really hard. Again, David Luiz wasn't tipped to smash it this year. People were actually laughing a little bit when Chelsea brought him back. I, I, I wouldn't say I was laughing, because I've always liked David Luiz, but I felt like it was maybe not the best business, uh, considering who, who they could have bought. But if I'd known they were going to play the three centre-back options, you would say David Luiz suits the three centre-back defence perfectly. As two centre-backs is a liability. You know, as a CDM, he, c he can work well. PSG was generally playing as a second centre-back. But in the three, he has the ability to really thrive, and that's what he's done this year. Equally, Cesar Azpilicueta has never really played centre-back. He's always been a full-back. He's reinvented himself. He deserves a load of credit. Michael Keane's had a fantastic year as well. For me, he's not the best of the bunch, but he definitely deserved his nomination. What about Toby Alderweireld? I'm a massive fan of this guy, and not just because he's Belgian. If you look, not only his performances and the way he's a great ball-playing defender, but if you look at his stats, okay, across the last few years, not only has he had more clean sheets uh, than Jan Vertonghen and played a lot less games because he's had a lengthy injury this year. But if you look at his stats generally across the last sort of six, seven years of his career, whether he was at Ajax, whether he was at Atletico Madrid, Southampton or Spurs, he's always been in what's been ranked either the best or second best defence in the league. He's a large part of that. So for me, it's probably between him and David Luiz. You guys went with Toby. I'm tempted to go with David, but I think I'm gonna go with you guys purely because Tottenham have had a better defense than Chelsea overall. They've conceded less goals. I've got to acknowledge that. Toby, well done. We're gonna need two center backs for this formation though, so we will bring David Luiz into it. He's just not the overall best centre back winner of the poll. Okay, so we're going to go with two central midfielders for this team. One's going to be more defensive and the other will be more offensive. So talking about the defensive one first, I gave you guys four options. Idrissa Gay, Ander Herrera, N'Golo Kante and Victor Juan Yama were your options and there was always going to be one winner. He won the actual player of the year award, uh, which went to N'Golo Kante, of course. Two years in a row, he's arguably been the best player in the league. Mares won it last year, but Kante probably could have got it. He was probably second up there. Um, what a player. What a, what a signing this man's been. I'm still baffled that Arsenal didn't try and sign him. I think I've made a video about it a year ago saying try and sign Kante. They spent more money on Chaka, who we will discuss in a different poll later on today. But um, yeah, well, not just Arsenal. Loads of teams could have gone in for him. Chelsea seemed to be unopposed. 30 million, I think they paid for him. 32 million. Absolute steal. This guy's worth double that, honestly. So good. I do think Ander Herrera has come through. And also, if you look at Idrissa Gay's stats this year, he actually is up there with... With Kante, he doesn't maybe get the plaudits he deserves because he's not playing in as good a team. But Everton have had a great season. He's one of the reasons for that. Unlike Kante, who stood out in a title-winning team, Guayes actually was good enough to perform in a relegation team like Aston Villa and still scouts saw the potential in him. So he's had a very good season, but you guys smashed the votes for N'Golo Kante and I've got to endorse that decision. 76% of you, in fact, went for Kante. Well done. And the next vote was pretty clear cut as well, to be fair. It was for the attacking centre midfielder. You had four options. They were Dele Alli, Christian Eriksen, Ross Barkley and Kevin De Bruyne. Special mention to Adam Lallana, who maybe could have gotten in there instead of Ross Barkley. They both had really good seasons. Probably in hindsight, I'd say Lallana was better than Barkley. I think Barkley's uh, got the most assists of any Englishman in the league. But Lallana has been amazing. He's unlucky to miss out on being included in this vote, to be fair to him. But he wasn't in there. And you guys went with Deli Alley, quality player, young player of the year, still so young. This guy has got bags of potential. I think he's already scored more goals and got more assists than Lampard, goals, Gerrard, uh, all did at this age, which is very interesting. I still think Kevin De Bruyne is just an absolute magician. When you watch him, the things he can do with the ball in zero time, like the crosses he puts in, 
unbelievable player, but Deli Alley's the deserved winner. Now, I'm looking at probably playing a, a kind of a 4-4-2 in this team with, with a couple of wingers, right? So the winger vote was really important, and there were some really strong standout contenders for this nomination. It was between Eden Hazard, Son Hyun Min, uh, Alexis Sanchez and Sadio Mane, okay? All of which have been ridiculous. It's so hard to choose them. Technically, Sanchez has played a lot of this season as a striker, but traditionally he does sort of play from the left and there's a load of really competitive striker nominations. So I'll put him in this category. Now you guys voted for Hazard as your number one option here. Um, he has been fantastic, but he wasn't actually that great last year. He was great the year before. He had that off year last year, which I think you've got to take into consideration, not obviously for this season, because we're voting on this season, but generally in the bigger question about how good Hazard is. You've got a question that little blip he had, because the world-class players, they don't have blips. Luis Suarez doesn't have an off year. Ronaldo and Messi don't have off years. Is Hazard in that conversation for me? Not quite. But in the next step of players, he's right up there with the Neymars, with the Bales, with these sort of guys. So the question remains, was he the best winger this season? Was he better than Alexis Sanchez? He certainly didn't score the goal Sanchez scored. But again, we talked about Sanchez spent more time up front. Was he better than Son Heung Min? Now, what I love about Son is he's done so much off the bench. He's been an impact player at times. Yes, he started a lot. But when he's come off the bench for Spurs, he's made a real impact. And I like him. I think he's a very direct player. And also Sadio Mane. What a season Sadio Mane's had. A lot, of, a lot of money was spent on him when Liverpool bought another player from Southampton. Another one. And he also had an injury this year. He also went to African Cup of Nations. And what's funny about Mane is he actually looked better when he wasn't playing. Because when he wasn't playing, Liverpool stopped performing as well. You realise how important to their team he was. And then he came back, started bagging the goals again. Because at one point it was like, oh, Liverpool's midfield so overpowering. You've got Mane, you've got Lallana, you've got Wijnaldum, you've got Coutinho, you've got Firmino in front of them all. Quality, quality players. But what you realise is, when you take Mane out of them, the rest just don't do it. Missing some of the other boys, they can still step up, but Mane is the key. So a lot of you felt that way. He was actually the second most popular on the vote. Hazard did win the vote. This may be the only one I disagree with you guys on, to be honest. I am really, really pushing for Sanchez to be in here. Even though he got the least votes of all four players, he got less than Son as well. And I really like Son, as I said. I think Sanchez should be in there, mainly because if you take Sanchez out of the Arsenal team, in my opinion, they would legitimately be 10 places lower in the table. Like, at least five lower. He's that important to them. His goals have been so good. He's been so good. It's so important that he signs a contract, guys. I can't stress that enough. Arsenal need to tie him down. Um, even though they might miss out on top four this year, they're very much likely to miss out on top four. Sanchez has been un unbelievable. For me, in my team of the season, he's in there. Probably at the expense of Mane and Son. I'm sorry, but I'm probably going to go with Hazard and Sanchez as my wingers. You guys, technically in the votes, have gone with Hazard and Mane. It's still a great team. Now, to finish off our uh, team of the year, we need a striker. We need two strikers, to be precise. I'm going with two up front this year. And it was a very competitive field. We had Diego Costa. We had Zlatan Ibrahimovic. We had Harry Kane. With Romelu Lukaku. 53% of you voted for Romelu Lukaku as your striker of the season. And I think if you take all things together, he's just ahead of Harry Kane. Um, for me, Diego Costa has had an okay year. I mean, Aguero was unlucky not to be included on here. Aguero, for me, is someone that doesn't necessarily, this year at least, get the credit he deserves because he comes into the team, he bags goals. Yeah, he's a, a lot of people say he gets a lot of penalties and whatnot, but forget about that. He's a goal scorer and he comes off. He misses. He always misses a large part of the season for injury or suspension this year, um, but he gets the goals. So I like Aguero, but he misses out. Uh, Ibra, what a signing for Man United. At his age, to do what he's doing is a joke. I only wish he signed for a Premier League team 10 years ago because the things we would have seen We'd have been witness to some unbelievable goals from Zlatan, I'm sure. Uh, has he had as good a year as Lukaku? No, because Lukaku's playing in a worse team. Lukaku scored more goals, and I just think he's come of age this year. I don't think he's complete, but he's looking so good. Harry Kane is another one who's just turned into a goal-scoring machine, uh, but he's playing in a very, very good Tottenham team. So... I'll go Lukaku and I'll probably go with I'll probably go with Harry Kane and Lukaku, but Zlatan would be on the bench for sure. I think you guys have voted well on this one though. So we've got our 11. Our IMO team of the year is De Gea in goal. Left back, we've got Marcus Alonso. Centre back, we've got Alderweireld and David Luiz. Right back, we've got Kyle Walker. Okay. In midfield, we have got Kante and Deli Alley in the middle. 
And on the wings, you guys would have Eden Hazard and Mane. I am going with Eden Hazard and Sanchez. And then up top is Harry Kane and Romelu Lukaku. That is a Premier League winning team if I've ever seen one. Maybe even a Champions League winning team. Although my only concern, David Luiz playing in a two centre-back formation. Not sure it's going to work out. Anyway, guys, we did do a load of more votes. The next vote was for uh, manager of the season. Allardyce, Conte, Pochettino, Pulis. All had great seasons for different reasons. You, that rhymes. You guys went with Conte. Um, deserved, coming to the Premier League. We've seen other managers like Pep Guardiola come into the Premier League and not perform. Conte's come straight in and smashed it with a team who, yes, have all the ingredients to do well, but off the back of a bad season. Tony Pulis and Allardyce didn't get a lot of votes from you guys, and I understand that they're not really fashionable manager choices. They don't necessarily set the uh, imaginations on fire, but they deserve so much credit. What they do every year is a joke. Even with Big Sam's dodginess at the start of the season with the England job not working out, he's coming to Palace and the form they're on at the moment is ridiculous. So well done to them. Pochettino, fantastic again, but he's not winning things. He's not winning things. To have the team they've got right now, I, if I was a Spurs fan, I'd be like, it's cool, it's going to run out eventually. The players are going to move on. If we don't win stuff now, we're not going to be able to keep those players. Just like Belgium, the national team, such a good uh, pool of players right now. If they don't win things, what does it mean? Now, the Unsung Hero Award was between Joshua King of Bournemouth, who's been getting loads of goals recently, James Milner, who's been putting a shift in out of position at left-back for Liverpool, uh, Jordan Pickford, the young goalkeeper at Sunderland, and Gilfrey Sigurdsson. Sigurdsson was unlucky not to be nominated for the central attacking midfield role. He has got a load of assists. I think he's got the most assists in the top five leagues in Europe this year. The Icelandic man is a ledge. I'd love him at West Ham. I would love him at West Ham. Um, he got your vote, 34%. Can't really argue with it. Jordan Pickford, it's, it's hard to make a case for a, a goalkeeper who's playing for a team that's probably going to finish bottom of the league and get relegated. But loads of potential. Someone should buy him. The Young Player of the Year award. I gave you four nominees. I gave you Dele Alli, Tom Davies, Gabriel Jesus and Jordan Pickford again. Now, I got a bit of stick for including Gabriel Jesus in there because he played like four or five games or whatever for Man City and then got injured, right? But... What a four or five games. Yes, I could have put Leroy Sané in there. And I think Young Player of the Season Award should be about the really young players, the under-21s where possible, um, who don't necessarily have to have played loads of game time and played 20-odd games, but have had a breakthrough of some kind. And Gabriel Zeus showed a lot for me, so I included him in there. Uh, you guys didn't go for it, though. You went with Deli Alli, obvious choice. I mean, he almost won Player of the Year, in my opinion, yet alone Young Player, and he's still so young. So, great winner. Well done to Delhi. I do like Tom Davies, by the way. I've actually got a video of him coming up soon. But Tom Davies, decent. Okay, signing of the season. This was an interesting one. We were looking at Zlatan, Kante, David Luiz and Sadio Mane. We've discussed them all today at length already, so I'm not going to go on too long. None of you thought David Luiz. Maybe because he's been signed by Chelsea before. Uh, maybe because they also signed Kante and he stole most of the votes here. But very, very clever signing if you consider the difference he's made to that defence. You know, there were times last year when Chelsea didn't look like they had two good centre-backs. They've actually gone to a formation which needs them to play three, but by bringing in David Luiz, by converting Azpilicueta, who also made Cahill look ten times the player he was last year, John Terry's not got a look in. Very impressive. But Kante snatched this vote, absolutely bossed it, in fact. Not surprising if he's got player of the year and he's a new signing, you're going to go with him. Maybe, obviously, Ibrahimovic was a new addition to the league. The other three had played in the league before, and Ibra deserves loads of credit for... It's not easy doing what he's done as a youngster or as someone in their prime at 35. Unbelievable scenes. Well done Zlatan, but Kante is the winner. On to worst signing. This is someone that we thought had a bit of a shock on. Maybe didn't live up to the potential or the price tag that was put on them. Nominees were Claudio Bravo, the goalkeeper at City, uh, Carrius, the goalkeeper at Liverpool, uh, Granite Chaka at Arsenal, and Simeone Zaza, who was a loan signing to West Ham. Claudio Bravo got the most votes. I mean, if you consider all the factors in this transfer, it's definitely the worst transfer because not only is he coming, at one point he was like, conceding every shot that was shot at him. Like, for a number of games, it was embarrassing for a goalkeeper. But you also consider the, the, the sequence of events which saw Joe Hart get mugged off and sent to Torino. A player that's won multiple Premier League titles, has won the Golden Glove, which means the most clean sheets in the league, multiple times. Joe Hart is a ledge. You can't just ignore that. I get that he doesn't play the style of football that Pep wants a goalkeeper to play. I understand there's a culture difference there, right? But then, when you bring someone in and you basically say, I'm going to spend a load of money on this guy, I'm going to lose someone who's worth so much, at least on loan, and basically embarrass a club legend, if it doesn't work out, you're going to get stick. And Pep deserves to stick for this. I hope he can admit his fault. Maybe not publicly, but I hope privately he knows he had a bit of a shocker there. There's no way Joe Hart would have done any worse. 
and Claudio Bravo has this season, that's for sure. Um, at times he's been playing Caballero instead. So Bravo had a shocker. Um, Granit Xhaka has not been terrible. He's had a few red cards, a few dodgy moments. It's more about the amount of money they paid for him. Arsenal finally splashed some cash on someone since Urgil and Sanchez, and it hasn't worked out. And if you compare it particularly to that, that Kante deal, who cost less, who Arsenal could have gone for, maybe they did, I don't know, but not a great sign. Simeone Zaza almost won it. I think maybe if we bought him and not loaned him and we hadn't got rid of him to Valencia in January, we would have won this one, Zaza. At least West Ham would have won something, but um, he was not good. Uh, after that penalty in the Euros, we should have seen it coming. But he had a shocker for us. Didn't do anything. No goals. Was giving the ball away. Let's not talk about it. Now, we gave you four nominees for the overall player of the season, which were uh, Lukaku, Kane, Kante and Deli Alley. And no surprise, Kante won another one. His third award, I believe, technically. He won the CDM, he won the signing of the season, and he won the player of the season. And it just shows you how much you guys like Kante, because you voted for him, obviously. But PFA, the league have been giving him awards all year as well. He deserves them. If he can keep it up, he'll go down as one of the best sort of central, central defensive midfielders of all time. Um, I would love to have the energy Kante has. That is the sort of person I want to be. When I do play centre midfield, I'm not the best technical player. Kante's certainly not either, but his engine is a joke. I'd love to have an engine like Kante. I'm working hard in the gym and on the road to be like Kante. We all want to be a bit like Kante. Then we did a world player of the season. I wanted to see how far your love of Kante would stretch. Should he be talked about in that conversation of the Messis and the Ronaldos? Is he that, that good? I personally don't think he is, certainly not yet, he needs to do it for another 10 years. And even then, if he was the best CDM ever, you're still not going to put him in the same conversation as someone that bags goals in every week. That's just the way football brains work, unfortunately. They don't get the same credit. So I wasn't surprised to see that Kante didn't win this vote. I threw Aubameyang in there. If you look at his goal scoring record at Dortmund, it is sensational. I mean, there's actually a thing called the Golden Shoe, which is about the top five leagues in Europe and who's got the most goals. And Aubameyang is doing very, very well in there. Um, he's been quality for Dortmund. I, I would love to see. I love Dortmund. I'm a big fan of. I've got a place in my heart for Dortmund. But I would like to see Aubameyang maybe move to a higher level, one of the big, big clubs. Love to see him in the Premier League. If not, maybe a Real Madrid or a Barcelona. See what he can do. I, I don't think he really would work in the Barcelona style. But I could see him at Real Madrid at the top of their strike force. That would be dangerous. But of course, Lionel Messi won the vote. Uh, he has. He's been doing what Messi does. He's back to his best. We saw him in the El Clasico the other day. He is the legend. I mean, is he the GOAT? Is he the greatest of all time? Is he better than Ronaldo? I think a lot of people would say he is. I think some people would say he's more gifted than Ronaldo is. Whereas Ronaldo is so technical and so uh, physiologically skilled. And Ronaldo scores, uh, Seb said it, actually, my brother said it really well. Ronaldo will be remembered for the number of goals he scored, whereas Messi will be remembered for not only the number, but the quality of the goals he scored. Interestingly, Kante got more votes than Ronaldo for this award. So Kante's pushing it. Maybe there's a little bit of Premier League bias coming through, but he's decent. He'll definitely be in the, t if he's not in the team of the year at the end of the year, the Ballon d'Or and all that, Someone's had a shocker. We did one more vote, actually. There's an award called the Golden Boy, which is about the most talented youngster. And this is like our version of it on the IMO, the most talented young player in the world right now. Deli Ali won it for the Premier League vote. Would he win it for the world vote? Your nominees were Deli Ali, uh, Usmane Dembele from, uh, from Dortmund, of course, Donnarumma, the young goalkeeper at AC Milan, and Mbappe uh, at Monaco, okay? He's been smashing it. All these players, are going to be world class, I'm convinced of it. But you went with Mbappe, he's been just banging them in. Um, Monaco still in the Champions League, of course, he's a large reason for that. And I think if he's going to go anywhere, Monaco is saying it could cost up to 100 million to buy him. Like he'd be someone that, you know, an Arsenal or who, who needs a striker right now, maybe a Manchester United if Zlatan's going to be out for a while. Would love to go in for, I'm sure, but that price tag is only going to allow for a certain few clubs to afford him. That is it for my IMO Player of the Year awards, guys. Thank you to everyone that casted their vote on Twitter. Uh, fantastic stuff. Make sure you follow me on Twitter if you want to get involved in that sort of thing in the future, at Spencer Rowan. All that's left for me is to tell you my six predictions for this week's Super Six. I'm hoping I can get 250 grand this weekend. It's possible. So first up is Southampton versus Hull. Hull are playing for Premier League survival, but I think it's going to be a draw. I think it's going to be one all. Stoke versus West Ham. My boys now. I'm going to go with my head on this one. I'm going to say Stoke are going to beat us at their place. They're going to win one nil. I hope I'm wrong. Sunderland, Bournemouth. Again, Sunderland looking like they're going to be in the championship next year. But I think they're going to salvage some pride in this game. I think they're going to beat Bournemouth one nil. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but I've got a feeling. West Brom, Leicester. 
Even though they're both kind of middle of the road now, they're, they're not going to go down, they're not going to get anywhere amazing. I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be 2-2. And in the championship, we've got Fulham versus Brentford. Fulham wanting to get that playoff place. I think they're going to win 3-1. And Leeds versus Norwich, again, wanting to get in those playoffs. Leeds just outside them right now. But a 2-1 win could push them up there. I think Leeds are going to do it. They're my predictions, guys. Now it's time to make yours. Download the Super 6 app completely free. Join my league. The pin you need is in the description. Get involved. You can compare yourself directly to me. And you might just win £250,000. And it's free to play. Okay? Even if you don't win, if no one gets all six results exactly right, you can still win like five grand if you just do the best out of everyone that plays. So good luck to you guys. Drop a like on this video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Until then, don't go change it. Bye-bye.